I document this project. <clears throat> These are the old trailing arms. Big aftermarket sprockets, spindles. Ran into a problem with our new trailing arms. Originally the coilover was mounted here, but uh, that won't work because the spring will hit these massive aftermarket half shafts. So now we have to bring the bottom of the coilover mount forward on this bracket and manufacture a support that'll hold the car. And then we have to clearance the cutouts for the new location of the springs. Yep, it'll work. Here's what we're doing to these brand new trailing arms. This is in the way of the coil. Because we're moving it forward to make clearance for the half shafts we need to clearance at. Put them as plates in the way. So we're gonna cut here, cut here, heat that up, hammer that down, and re-weld to our new clearance. Alright. Look at Joe, all sad. Because I cut up his brand new piece of thousand dollar piece of metal. No! Make yeah, not there. supposed to be happy about this one. <laughs> All right, part two. Cut that off. All right, here's the prep of the cutaway. Now we're gonna weld her up. All right, we got our pocket for our spring clearance. Now we need to cut that. This is why we had to do a mod because we were gonna move it forward. We decided to twist, and those are in the way, but we clearance that. And that's what that's going to look like. Back apart. Checking our clearances. Coils clear. The frame right there. And our other concern was this half shaft clearing the coils. And it does now, so we're good. All right. I think we're good. Finish welding up our cut and bend project that we did there. We're gonna make that solid again, but we had to cut and twist. So that'll work. Yeah. setting up a Corvette hubs a little bit to this this inner bearing is pressed on and then behind that is a seal that gets pressed on but this is pressed it onto the shaft <clears throat> so once this is all built if you have to make a change you have a spacer and a shim here you have to be able to dig that out because once you press that with the seal, you can't take it apart. And what we had to do <clears throat> was machine the inside of the surface so it slides there so we can fish it out to change clearances because what we're doing is setting up proper end play. So this took all morning to get this. So we got about one thousandths end play using the lathe and the mill. Working on the trailing arms. So these are all modded up and ready for finish work and paint and put it back together so that we can do coil over shocks. Yay! Okay, here we are early in the morning trying to get our back spacing correct. So this was the original shim. So we have zero in play. I'm gonna film and do it at the same time. So we have our deep spacer down in there. We're gonna start off with, oh, let's say 10 thousandths. We're gonna to add to our in play. And we're gonna take this shim, put it here. And we're gonna take our kind of film this bearing and then wipe my fingers off. And then we're gonna come here. We're gonna put the seal on after we get our in play dialed in. We're gonna come with our washer and that we we have to 
trying to surface this also so we can index our keyway for the castle nut. So we're going to torque this down and check our end play. And then we'll do some math and see what kind of corrections we have to make. If we're in between five thousandths, we're going to have to take it all apart and grab that spacer. Take it to the lathe or the mill <clears throat> and take a predetermined amount off. And there you go. Alright, put together, take apart half a dozen times. Finally got some backlash in play to measure. So we're looking at about 15 thousandths. Take back apart and we'll pull 15 thousandths out and see where we're at. Just got to document this in case I forget. So we have this shim, which is 67 thousandths. We got 45, 20, 15, and 10 in here. So we'll start off with these going in, uh, thin part up. And we'll take this 67 thousandths shim here, go back together, preparing. And then we have our flange nut. And we'll torque down, check again. All right, that didn't take long. One thousandths, good enough. Actually, it's very good. Calls for one to eight thousandths in play, but we were able to get one. So we're at the best end of the spectrum for tolerances. Now our keyway doesn't line up, so we have to take it apart. Put this thick washer on the mill, take off a couple thousands at a time until we get our keyway lined up, and then that should be good. Making a huge mess on the mill. Ah, it's snowing. This is for the uh, spacer block to change the pinion angle. Okay, this C2 has an LS7-427 modern drive technology, TKX 5-speed. If you look, the transmission is a lot bigger. There's nowhere to raise it up any higher. So the pinion angle on this drivetrain was 3 points. I'm using this digital inclinometer. <clears throat> anyway, that this actually I wrote it down. It was three point eight. So three point eight, and we came back to a differential, and it was one point five. We needed to be under one, so we came to three point four. So we have almost a half a degree pinion down angle, which will flex and come near parallel. <clears throat> but we we couldn't bring the front of the pinion up anymore because it's already up against the frame So the only way to change that is to bring the back down And so we made this custom aluminum shim about 600 and 900 thousandths angle And that puts our pinion angles back where they need to be These turned out really good Quill over shock system because it takes these massive half shafts. Normal is about two and a half inch diameter half shaft. These are three and a half. Mo better. All right, so there we go. Okay, you gotta tell this story because it's not a bolt up application. So we started off with a car that had an alignment. We know that the tires were straight. So the back tires are wider than the front. So the back tires stick out further. So what we did was to get a baseline before we tore it apart. We took the string line, ran to the front, <clears throat> and with calipers, measured how far the string stuck out and wrote that down. We went back together to do the alignment. We had to put it back exactly where it was and we're within a couple thousandths of Alignment with what we can see on the string line types. Here's the shims for the alignment. This is after we had to take it apart. Put it all together, checked alignment, had to disassemble the entire the entire thing to make a correction. And what we just noticed this morning <clears throat> on the old trailing arms we had this much adjustment for the trailing arm. 
we only have this much adjustment on the new band steel threading arms. So we had, if I get this in here, the treading arm was all the way in and the tire was still kicked out a little bit. So this is what we came up with. We are going, we were thinking about bending the trailing arm, but then we put our spring closer to the trailing arm. We don't want that. So to bring the trailing arm out, get it away from the spring, give us shims on both sides for adjustment. We're going to put this on the mill. A lot of crazy homemade math. We came up with a dimension on the other side of 60,000. So we're going to take 30 thousandths taper off of this to bring the wheel in. We're going to do that on the mill. Show you that later. Okay, here we are at the mill. We have our hub. What we're going to do is come down to zero here. We're shimmed up 30 thousandths here. So we'll put a 30 thousandths taper on this. That'll bring the front of the wheel in. Thirty there, down to zero. There's our taper. All right, here's our backyard alignment shop. So before we took it apart, we measured. Uh, we pulled this string out until the front just touched, and we came up with three hundred thirty thousandths. And before I machined this, this was touching here, and I had to pull it out to where it even touched. But now, if you hold that for me. We have all this adjustment. We can go that way and all that. We have all that adjustment. Now we didn't have adjustment before. So there you go. And so we're gonna be, I'm guessing, if we're measuring within a couple thousandths on the front, we're gonna be within a fraction of a degree of alignment towing. And we checked our camber, we're good there too. Of course, we go to lead the brakes, and the master cylinder is not pumping to the rear. So we got a kit. I'm gonna rebuild that real quick. And do we got? So when we we're doing the brake bleeding on the front, we are getting uh, fluid pushing back up during port closure with the uh, seal, but not on the rear. And we did find a flaw one of the cups so we'll give it a shot cleaned out our tiniest ports with a tip cleaner right. and this one here is lined stainless 